Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part three of the Pro Tools First Pro course. In this part, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up and install your audio interface so that you can record your music or podcasts into Pro Tools First and also hear the playback as well. I'll also touch upon onboard audio and the other options you have, and we'll be looking at the differences between onboard audio and audio interfaces. Before we start, I'll clarify that you don't need an audio interface to record and play back into Audacity. There are other options. It is possible to set up USB microphones um, and you can use the onboard audio in your system. But with a dedicated audio interface like a Focusrite Scarlett interface or a PreSonus audio box, you're using the sound card within that device. It's much more stable, easier to get working and you're gonna get much better sound quality out of it. USB microphones don't tend to work as well. They tend to be harder to set up with Pro Tools first. Um, and if you plug directly into your system to try and record, it's not going to be loud enough. You can plug your speakers directly into the interface as well. It's a lot more versatile. You can plug your headphones in as well. And normally you're gonna get a better quality recording with a good audio interface with less noise. So let's look at how you can get your audio interface installed and set up for Pro Tools first. So we've got Pro Tools installed. If you haven't got it installed yet, then go back to part two, um, where I go over how to download and install the software. I'll leave a link in the description below. But if you've got it all installed now, the first thing you wanna do is close it because you wanna be installing your audio interface while Pro Tools first is not loaded up. Now, depending on your audio interface, it's the process is gonna be slightly different, but I'm gonna go over the general process and you should be able to follow it for your own device as well. And then we will touch upon using PC audio later on uh, for if you, well, either don't have an audio interface yet or uh, you have any issues with your audio interface and you wanna carry on working uh, with Pro Tools first. So firstly, you're gonna to wanna to download and install the driver for your audio interface. And depending on which audio interface you use, I use a Focusrite 18i8 on this computer. You're gonna to wanna to go to the website and download the driver, or if the interface came with a CD with the driver on, then you can just install it straight from the CD. Um, but you probably wanna update it anyway. So. For just for example, for the for the Focusrite interfaces, which you might have, you might not, um, you can go on their downloads page, pick your uh, pick your product, and then download the USB driver to get it all working. Uh, often your interface will have some kind of mix control software where you can it's like a virtual mixer where you can change levels and and routing. Uh, for outputs and inputs and things like that. So that will, uh, you want to download that as well. I recommend after installing any audio software, you do give your PC or your Mac a restart. And then once you're back on, just to test that it's all installed correctly, firstly, you can go into your audio devices there um, on, on Windows or in, in your Mac preferences and find your audio device that you've installed. So Focusrite USB audio, that's the device, uh, that's, the, that's the audio driver for this interface. So if you have a PreSonus or a Steinberg or anything like that, it should come up in your audio devices if it's installed correctly. And then aside from that, you can also open any uh, software with a user interface that it installed as well. So for Focusrite, it gives you this Scarlett Mix Control. Um, you can see that we're getting input already from the mic that's plugged in and you can set the sample rate and stuff. We'll go, we'll go into that later on, but just follow the instructions for installation, give it a restart, get the box hooked up and make sure that it's set to, to your device in your Windows or Mac preferences. If you don't have an audio interface or you have issues with your audio interface later, there's another driver called ASIO for all, ASIO for all all.org and this one allows you to use your windows audio in pro tools first so if you're using windows audio then you follow the same process but you install this driver instead now once you've got that installed and all sorted you know it's working make sure you do before you before you worry about pro tools but once it's all sorted just open up pro tools first again now we've got pro tools first open you can create a session just to test um, i'm just going to open one that i created already and then we're gonna to wanna to check that the audio interface is set as the playback device. So as soon as you've opened it up, 
you can go into Setup Playback Engine. Now, it's likely that it's all automatically selected your device, but if not, you can click on Playback Engine. You've got the Windows audio device, that's just your Windows audio, of course, um, or, or it'll be something different if you're using Mac OS. And then that's where we've got the focus right driver. So you click on your driver. It says selecting this playback engine will automatically save and close your project. So if you ever you change your uh, device driver, you, or you do need to restart. Had it set that set to focus right anyway, but we'll restart just to show you the process. And you can reopen your project and then go back into the playback engine, just double check it's selected that there. You can also see the default output. If your audio interface has multiple outputs, then you can choose um, where you want the audio to be playing back. So if you've got the speakers plugged in in uh, monitor one and two, then you're going to be selecting that. Or if I wanted to listen back to the SPDIF uh, output, then I'd select that. You've got the sample rate set to 44.1 kilohertz. That's sort of the resolution of the audio. I can't change this in here, but if you have an audio interface which supports other sample rates, then if you change that, uh, normally in your in your user interface, you mix control, um, you'll be able to use a different sample rate in Pro Tools first. And then it's got Optimize Engine for record or playback. So record is going to have a very small buffer size to avoid latency. Um, and then playback is going to have a longer one. So we haven't recorded anything yet and we're going to be recording soon in this course. So let's leave it on record for now. And if you were using the ASIO driver, then it would show up in the playback engine once installed and it would allow you to use your Windows audio. So if we hit play, the fact that that's moving shows that the, that it's accepted the driver. In the next two parts of the course, we're going to be setting up a microphone so you can test the audio recording and then we're going to be importing some audio to test playback as well. With your audio interface set up, you're ready to record and playback in Pro Tools first. In the next part, we're going to be taking a look at USB microphones, the possibilities you have there. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that part. After that, we'll be looking at the user interface and then of course, importing some audio and getting to work on our audio. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions at all, and it'd be good to know what audio interface you're using. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in part four.